Mr. President, I rise today uh, to talk about how the current process that we're in right now uh, with the energy uh, challenges we have, not just in our country, but around the world, uh, uh, and how permitting, uh, the permitting process that we're working on, how that can uh, uh, help relieve the, uh, the challenges that the American public have right now with high prices at the gas pump, high prices that they're receiving in their home for heating and, and all the necessities they have. Uh, the, what's at risk right now, and I, I want people to understand what's at risk, is the energy independence and, and, and energy security of the United States of America. If we're going to remain the superpower of the world, if we are the one country that has it all, you better have energy independence. If you can't produce your own energy and you're going to ask other people around the world to do what you won't do for yourself, but you have the ability to do it and the resources to do it, God help us all. That's what we're, that's what we're dealing with. So uh, I'm going to uh, talk about how Congress can, can provide some relief here. Uh, the 2022 uh, Energy uh, Independence and Security Act we've been working on, uh, it's, it's going to be paramount to maintaining what we have. Uh, that means we have to focus on quit blaming each other. This has become a personal thing, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, some people on the extreme left liberals don't like it because they want no permitting changes. We have some people on the caucus over here, are my Republican friends, who've always been for it, but now the leadership has made it personal to be against it. But let me tell you who suffers. It's all the people, all the American citizens are going to suffer if we don't do something. Um, we're all citizens of this great country, and we're all so grateful for having the opportunities we have by living here, but we have an abundant amount of energy, abundant amount of energy that we can produce cleaner than anywhere else in the world. I've always said this, decarbonization. We all should be committed to decarbonizing, to help the atmosphere and to help the climate. That's our responsibility as human beings, especially in the developed nation and the developed world. Decarbonizing means two things, however you, however you intend to interpret it. <clears throat> Some people want to decarbonize by basically eliminating anything that has fossil. Well, guess what? Our friends in Europe tried that. Our European friends tried that. Look where they are. And then there's those of us who want to basically say we can decarbonize by producing more fossil, cleaner in the United States of America, and basically disper dis dis dispersing the dirty fossils produced around the world. That's all we're saying. When you have oil and gas coming from Venezuela, which is produced with no oversight whatsoever, dirtier than any place in the world, and we were going to go to them to remove sanctions to help us? It made no sense. We were going to ask Iran, who's the most proliferating terrorist support in the world, it made no sense whatsoever. When we were asking Saudi Arabia, please produce more oil to help us, no support makes no sense at all. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, I have beside me here that kind of spells out what, what we're confronting. Here's the common permitting timelines for energy and minerals projects. The timelines. United States, a minimum of five to ten years. Minimum of five to ten years. Canada, one to three years. Australia, one to three years. And they haven't deleted any of their oversight for, for uh, review. They haven't deleted any of that. Now, let me tell you the extreme that's going on in the world today. The European Union, which has had pretty stringent oversight on, on, uh, on environment, they are considering emergency bypassing all environmental reviews because it's critical to them. Energy has been weaponized by Putin. Energy has we been weaponized. And we in America can offset that. We can. No matter what you want to build, whether it's transmission, pipelines, hydropower dams, more often than not, it takes too long. It drives up costs. You can double your cost within a five to six, seven year period. Double from what the original cost may be and projected cost. Today's energy and mineral projects, uh, as I've said before, take too long. And then you come over here. Look at basically what the United States citizens, all the constituents, 330 million people are subjected to. Natural gas, up 200%. The cost of natural gas, 200%. The cost of natural gas in Europe, 1,100% increase. 1,100%. Predicted by next year, some utility homes will be paying up $7,000 a month. They're going to be subsidized by the government. They can't do that forever. Can you imagine? 
those type of outrageous costs. Gasoline, gasoline's up 67%. Under both this administration, previous administration, 67%. Electricity's up 15% and climbing, climbing. When you uh, uh, have countries such as Australia and Canada that are doing it and doing it in a clean fashion, but also doing it in an accelerated fashion, uh, that's something that we should be looking at. And that's how. We've talked about permitting for years and years and years. If you're on the renewable side and you want all renewable, no fossil whatsoever, you can't get a transmission line built. If you're going to build a wind farm or a solar farm in the middle of the desert where there's no people and you've got to build, take that electrons, take that electricity back into the marketplace, you've got to cross a multitude of state lines. You've got to have permitting reform to get it done. You're not going to be able to deliver the energy that people need. Look at our friends, in, whether it be in California, look what's happened in Texas. All this, you know, the, the, this very, very uh, fragile what's going on. But the good news is next week we're going to have an opportunity to help accelerate these energy projects clear across the country and the needs that we all have uh, if we don't let politics get in the way. If we basically look at what the United States of America needs, what the people in this country need, and what they want to make sure that we have the energy independence to do it ourselves and not rely on foreign supply chains. That's what it's about. And I've always said, if I can go home and explain it, if I can talk to all of you and explain it, I can vote for it. I can explain what we're doing. I truly can. Whether it be from the IRA, a bill that basically gives us a pathway to walk and chew gum, provide the energy need we, for, we need for today, but also invest in the energy we need in the future. We're doing both, but you can't do them unless you have permitting reform. Now, everyone thinks this is a side deal. There's no side deal. We talked about all this at one time. We put this project together under one auspice of energy independence and the security this nation needs and the relief the citizens need from high inflation. That's what, and also the support that we need for our allies in Europe are having a difficult time. So let me lay out the facts and explain why voting for energy permitting reform is something that should make sense to each and every one of my colleagues on both my Republican side and Democrat side. But put plainly, with the same state of energy prices, our constituents across the country, they can't afford for the politics to stand in the way of a long overdue bipartisan action on energy permitting reform. Domestically, American families and businesses are feeling the pain. This Putin's energy war, I won't, I won't acknowledge this as a Russian war. This is one, one demagogue who basically has brought the, the havoc uh, and the unrest that we have in the world today. One man, Putin. And he has basically weaponized energy like we've never seen and ever thought would be done. And this must be answered. Uh, we have the infrastructure and we have the, and we have the resources. I've said that before. American natural gas prices average around $9 per million a BTU. $9 per million. Uh, the same price, I mean, most of this energy comes from my state of West Virginia. A lot of the gas does because we have the Marcellus and the Utica Shell, which is the richest probably deposits of natural gas that we've ever seen in this country, let alone in the world. But with that, those prices were in a $2.53 dollar range. It balances out pretty well at $5. At $9, it does not. But that's not. Look what the Europeans are paying. The Europeans are paying astronomical $60 and $70 equivalent to the same MCF. $60 to $70 versus our $9, which we think is outrageous. This is the crunch that we're in. Uh, even the cost savings that, that we have achieved by energy efficiency, electricity, home energy costs are up. Americans are concerned, reliability, everybody's watching things that are taking a heck of a hit right now. Um, the changing energy mix is not yielded affordability for American families evenly, uh, in part because we haven't been able to, to knit together the widespread resources of transmission and the delivery of this energy. That's the hardest thing we have. You can only do that by building more infrastructure. You can't do it by hoping one skips over another to get you what you need. You've got to have infrastructure, whether it's transmission or pipelines, to get you the energy you need. Uh, the Consumer Price Index tells a story. Consumers paid 16% more for the electricity service and 33% more for their gas services. 
and it's only going to get worse, not better. Absolutely. I'm grateful that we've made progress addressing prices at the pump. As we said, a gallon of gasoline remains 67 percent higher than it did five years ago. These are the type of pocketbook issues they truly are that are impacting day-to-day -day decisions Americans make. People are making decisions now how they're going to get from one day to the next, one month to the next, and what will happen next year. They're making those decisions. They're making it when the gas prices are still too high, when the energy prices are absolutely too high, and the unrest from supply chains are making it almost impossible to do the things or have the things you need or that you want. I've heard my colleagues on both sides of the aisle propose a variety of solutions to address the rising cost of energy for American consumers, whether it be through more oil or gas, a switch to electric vehicles. Let me ask you, Mr. President, where do they think the electricity comes from if they buy an electric vehicle? It's got to be produced. It's got to be produced. You've got California, I'm understanding, you're saying they want all electric vehicles by a certain date. Yet they're telling people you can't charge your car in certain times of the day. Something doesn't make sense. We have to be realistic, be practical about this, pragmatic. Uh, all those things uh, are going to take federal permits for us to make sure they have the energy they need. We're going to have to face this sooner or later. It's only possible if you can build it. If you can build it and you can make sure that we have uh, the changes that, 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 that the consumers are going to demand in America, if we can make those, then fine, if we can supply it. If we can't, I guarantee you the chaos will be unbelievable for all of us who represent these great people. Our producers are handcuffed by an arduous permitting process that doesn't allow to meet the supply, supply problems uh, that we're facing, uh, and it's uh, not getting any better. Uh, let, me, let me kind of throw the political process that we have out. My Republican friends have always been very supportive, always. And I have a lot of my Democrats friends that understand that we need permitting reform but we've never gotten it done. Whether we've had all Democrats in charge, whether it be the president being a Democrat, House and Senate being Democrat controlled, or whether it was four years ago when you had the Republicans who basically had a president was Republican and Senate and House, they couldn't get it done. You can only get it done if we work together. We can only get this done if our Republican colleagues and our Democrat colleagues work together. It won't happen. And it was not, if we don't do it now, in my lifetime, and a lot of my colleagues' lifetime, it's not going to happen in our lifetime. It's not. And if we continue to strap the American people with the highest cost of delivery of products they need because of our infrastructure and the cost of infrastructure, which we end up doubling and tripling the price because of the owner's position we put them in to go through a process of permitting, and they know that going up front, that cost is passed on. They don't absorb that cost. So if a pipeline costs $3 billion, what you anticipate to build a pipeline to deliver the energy you have, whether it be hydrogen or whether it be natural gas, and that ends up costing you $6 billion or $7 billion, you and I pay that price. Every one of our constituents in our states pay that price. Um, we're suffering from self-inflicted shortages. We're anticipating shortages right now. The next five years, basically, our gas supplies and our gas deposits are down. Natural gas. Natural gas is down. And we can do and change that. We can change that because the energy we have under our feet right now, if we can just get it to the market, it'll not only fulfill the surpluses that we have, it'll basically be able to help our allies across the, across the globe here that need it most. Because the worst thing in scenario is, is if the Ukraine war and the pressure that that war is putting on energy that goes into Europe, and the Europeans are facing some absolutely astronomical hardships. And those hardships reflect where they're putting pressure on Ukraine to make a deal with Putin. God help the world. God help us all. If Putin walks away and, look and, and can say we had a victory and he has a propaganda machine that he can say anything he wants, no matter the devastating losses that he has taken with his troops and the economic challenges he has in his country, but the unbelievable carnage and pain he's put on Ukraine, and they're going to be forced because of energy to make a decision. And we can help that and prevent that from ever happening. That's what we should be doing. That's basically the challenge that we have. So you either rise to the challenge or you don't. You either put your politics aside and forget about your personal vendettas and your personal arguments, whatever. Look at the contents of the bill. Look at what's, 
we're going to have in front of us that you can vote on, that you can make a difference. I've often said, if you can go home and explain it, you can vote for it. And I truly believe this piece of legislation will do that. We're putting people to make hard choices. They shouldn't be put in that position. I tell Americans every day, I speak to them, I say, you know, don't let, uh, let Washington make you believe you're divided. You're not divided. We're divided here. We, we are forcing the constituents of our states to pick a side. What side are you on? There's only one side. That's the American side. There's not another side. We have Republican friends and Democrat friends. We might have different ideas, but when the country is challenged, we have one problem to solve. And that's what we're working on right now. You can come with a different ideas. We can go through the whole process, but we should come together. You shouldn't say, well, my side's right. We're against that. My side's right because we're for it. Well, we both have to be. This doesn't pass. Nothing moves on permitting unless we work together. If all the Democrats vote for it, it's not enough. If all the Republicans voted for it, it's not enough. The Senate is unique. It takes 60. So it's going to take 10 or more from one side or the other. And right now, I would say our Republican friends and colleagues are going to have to look deeply at something that they've always wanted and have a chance to, in their hands to grab. But let politics come between us. I hope not. I don't think so. I'm still betting on the right thing will be done at the right time. Uh, I understand that, 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 that the political process we're in is highly charged. I'm hoping that the American public basically says enough's enough. Come on, it's for the country, it's not for you. It's not to make your party stronger or to make the other one look bad. It's not to give one an advantage over the other. This process is to fix the problems to keep this country the strongest country on earth, keep us basically the superpower of the world, and we only have one way to do it, to be doing everything we can for ourselves. And I guarantee you, when you're able to do that, you're able to draw your allies closer to you. The people want to be, they want to be associated with the winner. They want to be associated with an economy that you can't stop and with a quality of life that's next to none. That's what they want to be associated with. And the American dream can be alive. It can only be alive if we do everything to keep it vibrant. So that's what we're working on. Um, less than a year ago, you know, we acted, Congress, here we did, bipartisan way to accelerate public works permitting uh, in the infrastructure bill. Now we did it for infrastructure. We finally came together and said for the last 30 years, We've known that our roads and bridges and our pipelines and our internet service, everything needed to be improved. And we voted in a bipartisan way. And you know what we did? We changed how we did the permitting to get those things to fruition, to build a road or a bridge. But yet we can't do it for energy. It doesn't make any sense to me at all why we can't do it for energy, but we were able to do it for infrastructure. In the coming days, we're going to have that opportunity to take the action that will move the needle on getting types of energy and critical minerals. Try getting a permit for a mine, critical minerals. You know, we just passed a bill, the IRA bill, basically says on the car manufacturing. Car manufacturing, we want to get people transitioned. Electric vehicles should be desirable if you either like the product or you don't. But you'll make those decisions. The only thing about, the only way you're going to get a credit is if the manufacturers are sourcing the critical minerals from either... North America or favored nations, such as Australia and our European friends. Not those, and right now, all of it's coming from China. China has a lock on this. So until we decide to get off our butts, start doing what we should be doing for ourselves so we don't have to be crippled by a supply chain. You know what I told everybody? I said, the first time in the history of the United States of America. Think about this great country. Henry Ford, the uh, mass production line. We have been able to produce in the United States of America without any foreign supply chains that were needed, the combustible engine, all the drive trains, and everything else it took for transportation mode. We were able to do that, whether it be for trains, planes, or automobiles. Guess what? Now they come out and they say, we're going to do VEVs, electric vehicles. First time in the history of the United States, we cannot produce what is needed for that to be a transportation mode. And I refuse to, to give up and say we can't do it. So that's why in the bill that we passed, you're going to have to source the critical minerals that's needed for the batteries that are going to be uh, supplying the power for these vehicles, and it's going to have to be produced in North America. We shouldn't be waiting on a foreign supply chain says, oh, I'm sorry, we don't agree with your geopolitical stance on so many things, so we're not going to agree to give you what you need. We process the anodes and cathodes that make these batteries, but that's, that's all China. It's not us, and we're not going to get caught in that. 
So that's what we were trying to correct. In the coming days, we're going to have this opportunity, and I say that again, truly an opportunity. Uh, we can keep the cost down. We can make it affordable. We can relieve the pain at the pump. We can relieve the pain when you see your energy bills being mailed to you every month. We can fight all this, and we can unlock the energy and climate benefits of the Energy Act of 2020, of the bipartisan infrastructure law and the inflation reduction. We can do all of that. But you can't do it in a timely fashion to meet the challenges the world has today unless you change permitting, which is something we've all wanted. It streamlines, it streamlines electric transmission lines. It's, it's, I don't know what to tell you. Right now, there are approximately 20 interstate transmission projects in various stages of planning. 20. Those take, right now, an average of 10 years. And on top of that, a quarter of those, 25% of those, go into litigious extensions, which is even longer, 15, 17 years, some of them. There's nobody in the developed world looking at us saying we are effective and efficient, and what we're doing is delivering the most effective and efficient pricing that we can and the, and, and, and the most reliable uh, energy that's needed. Uh, in this permitting bill, sir, Mr. President, we do not bypass any of the oversights from the, from the, uh, from the uh, environmental review. Whatever we have in place is still there. We're just going to put guidelines and timetables. You either do it in a sufficient amount of time or we move on. So that's what we're doing. And we're simultaneously going to two or three agencies at the same time. All we did is look at what was successful around the world. That's all we did. And we made it applicable to what we're trying to do here so that we can compete on an even playing field. And we're going to continue to do that. This bill isn't just my idea. Everyone says, well, it's a personal thing. It's my idea. This bill is not my idea. This bill is a combination of everybody in this body and also the challenges we have right now. The war in Europe has accelerated everything. The inflation has accelerated the need to do something quickly. And if we don't get off our proverbial hind ends and start acting like Americans and not Republicans, Democrats fighting for our own respective side, you know, I, I see we have spectators here watching what we're doing. We have people watching what we're doing. They got to be sick and tired of all we do is call each other names. Every Republican over there, I consider them a friend. Every one of the 50. And every one of my 49 colleagues, I consider a friend. I don't have all the answers, and they're not always wrong. Somewhere in between, we can find an answer to the problems. That's all we're asking for. And I'm going to continue to do that. I don't, I, I'm not giving up, and I won't give up. And we have an opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. If we don't, then you've got to go home and explain. Why not? I don't have to worry about that because I know why I am for this, and I know why that I think it'll help every person in my state of West Virginia and every one of my fellow Americans in this country. I really do. And I hope that we rise to this occasion. We're going to find out next week. We don't have much time to wait now. We'll find out where we stand. And if there are people willing to vote to shut down this government because of political reasons they don't like permitting when it's something they fought for all their life and political life, they have to answer to that. So with that being said, Mr. President, I appreciate very much the opportunity to be able to speak on this subject because I think it's so important and it's coming down to the point to where we have, a, we have great legislation. We've done a lot of bipartisan things, worked on some good stuff this past two years. Unbelievable. Now do you want to make sure that it, it, you take advantage of that and bring it to, to the market quicker? You want to make sure you get the prices down? You fight inflation, you show the rest of the world that you can depend on the United States of America. That's what it's about today. So with that, I say thank you. And with that, I notice the absence of a coroner.